Hello, Ahmad Austin here, and on this series of landscape painting, I'm going to be doing a lesson on painting a landscape painting with a flat edge palette knife. And with this palette knife, it's kind of square edge as I showed in the previous uh, landscape painting, and you're going to be using it to paint the entire uh, painting with that flat edge palette knife. So here I'm going to mix up some color. I'm um, starting off with my sky first, and I'm using some white, titanium white, and uh, some ultramarine blue. And here I'm just going to kind of start it up a little bit, just layering both paintings, mixing both paintings together, as you can see. And I'm just going to apply the paint kind of like I used to do, but this time I'm going to turn my palette knife actually to the side. And I'm going to go from left to right and I'm going to downward motion. And it's going to be a cool look once I finish because all the strokes are going to be in the same direction. So. Just check it out and just watch as um, I show you how I paint with the flat edge palette knife. And here I'm just going left to right with the uh, palette knife. Kind of just putting sort of like splotches inside the uh, canvas. Here I'm using a, uh, what size is this? Um, 11 by 14 uh, canvas. Excuse me, 8 by 10. Excuse me, 8 by 10 can uh, canvas board. As you notice, I already drew the uh, outline for my where my trees is going to be and where my land. And at the bottom, I'm going to put uh, some some water at the edge of the bank. So I just drew those lines just kind of give me an idea where I'm going to have every all my objects inside the landscape painting. Now you can do the same technique with the uh, photograph that you took, um, say in your local area, or you can use it um, the same technique with the photograph that you take off the internet. So. Here I just kind of made up a mock-up, kind of something I just had in my mind. But I just the main thing I just want you to know the technique of using the flat edge, just kind of uh, creating this unique look with the flat edge palette knife. Here I'm going in the sky. I have a little mixture of light blue and a little darker blue. Not really dark, but just kind of want to mix it up with the sky. I didn't want it to be too flat. Now for this particular um, painting, I didn't add any um, medium. I'm just using the paint straight out of the tube. And here I'm just going over to the to the side. It's going back and forth. And again, I'm just going in downward motion. All my strokes will have that kind of look where it's going, kind of like the painting is almost dropping on the canvas. Well, I say dropping, but falling from the canvas. <laughs> And again, uh, when you if you try this technique, be loose, uh, kind of loosen up a little bit, loosen up your hand, loosen up your arm, um, relax. A lot of times, painters trying to make everything perfect. You're not going to be able to make uh, a perfect painting, especially using doing this technique. We're basically trying to get a certain look from this technique, and that's all we're going for. Here, I'm adding some clouds, so I add some white to kind of bring out in the sky. And again, it just adding white, mixed with a little blue. Now I'm going to start adding my tree. Here I'm using a um, hooker's green, sort of a dark green, and I'm going to add, mix in a little blue, a little yellow, and I'm going to start off with my dark layer up for my um, trees, and then I'm going to move in with the lighter green to um, add some highlights to the um, trees and the grass. So, As you can see, I'm just adding just a tad bit of um, cadmium yellow to the green.
Again, just the same way, turning my palette knife to the side. Sometimes it may be a little tempting to turn it a different way, but I just consciously try to keep my finger, my hand turned to the side as I go. I'm going to add a little bit more light green to my trees. Mix in a little white. And this is kind of like my favorite part when seeing that light up against that um, dark showing that different contrast. This just looks real, real cool to me. And um, then you start to get a, kind of get a sense of how the paint is going to develop. And when you start adding those different variations of light and dark, you kind of get um, an idea of what you want to do next to create the form that you want within the um, objects. Especially when it comes to a landscape painting where you have uh, natural form instead of uh, geometric shapes. Now I'm going down to my grass. Still going in a downward motion. Tempted to turn my knife <laughs> uh, straight up, but just kind of consciously turn it, keep it to the side. Feel it in the sky. Down at the bottom. Now some of that green got on my blue, but that's okay. I kind of like the the uh, imperfectness of it, so that's cool. If you know me by now, I'm real lax on far as you know, not having everything perfect. I think ever since I've been in school, painting school, I've always had to make sure everything was perfect so just kind of go against it now I'm going to add uh, my grass and I'm going to make my grass just a little bit darker um, and I'm going to do that by adding a little red to my green as you know red is the complementary color of green so of course it's going to um, naturally get darker now I don't want to add too much and too much yellow or to turn the paint brown so Try to zoom in a little bit so you can see. And again, go ahead and start adding my grass. Now on my palette knife I have a little dark green mixed in with a little light green so that's fine. Let's kind of give it that natural look especially when you're doing something like a landscape. That's perfectly fine. It kind of works with the painting instead of working against the painting. And again going just in a downward motion. Now I want to add another layer to my grass, and this time I'm going to add a uh, sort of a more neutral color, kind of close to brown, so to speak. I'm going to add a little bit more red and a little yellow to it. 
and just kind of just add some color and just give it a natural effect to my painting instead of the whole grass being all green As you can see, some of that red coming through that color, almost looking uh, violet, which is fine. And this is kind of helping up, helping kind of break up the flatness of the painting instead of being all just one uh, greenish tone painting. As you see, I'm going to add a couple more other colors to it as well as I go down to the bottom of the canvas board. Alright, now I'm going to lighten up my brown a little bit. It's like another layer that I'm adding within the uh, landscape at the bottom landform. And it's just a little bit lighter than what I had already. Now I'm going to work on my um, my water. And here I'm going to mix up uh, a different type of blue. Um, it's not ultramarine. It's like a, a pathelio blue. And I'm going to mix that in with the white. Just kind of, I don't want the sky and the uh, water to be the same um, blue. So just a little bit different and again I'm going to use the same technique when I'm going left to right in a downward motion again Sometimes it can be a little tough trying to keep that palette knife turned to the side and going in a downward motion because sometimes I tend to paint in different directions other than just going down. But I think this is much easier since I have a smaller canvas board as well. So maybe if I were doing a larger canvas doing this technique, it may be a little bit more difficult. So if you try this technique, I would definitely encourage you to start off with a small uh, canvas. And I'm kind of smooth this out, this edge out a little bit. Just kind of break it up a little bit. Especially with it being the water. But again, I don't want it to be too perfect. Or too obvious, I should say. I don't want a complete straight line or curved line, so to speak. Blue is a little bit darker on the right, but that's okay. And just filling in all my areas, empty spaces, so to speak. Now the water touching that light brown is okay, but I'm going to kind of break that up with a um, yellow, yellowish color. And I'm going to use um, um, this yellow here. I forgot which yellow this is, but I have it in the um, notes on the web page hosting this video. 
So here I'm just going to break this up a little bit, just add a little bit more color and also break up that water. Um, which touching the kind of like the bank, I should say, of the uh, landscape. That's it. Just kind of lightly touch it up. Again, breaking up the edge. So it won't look too obvious. And notice, I didn't want it to be a distraction throughout the painting. Kind of have a continuity of all the colors, kind of uh, natural. Have a natural look, a natural form. So. It looked it okay at first with the curved line, but I just wanted to kind of break it up. Kind of had a continuity throughout the painting. Now I'm going to touch up the uh, painting, just adding a little areas that I may have missed. And also, I kind of want to help define the trees a little bit. They're kind of looking a little bit too spotchy, so to speak. So I'm just kind of help uh, bring out the form of the trees. I hope you guys like this painting. This is one of my favorite paintings, I should say. Um, I could add a little bit more dark green in the middle of the tree. Um, just having that light green is kind of... Uh, maybe it'll look, be a little too much for the tree. So that's probably what I would do and go back and do. Here I'm adding the... Uh, bottom part of the tree, the bark. And I'm just using the, pretty much the edge of the uh, palette knife. I'm just lightly touching small areas when I work on my uh, touch up. white so my water won't look so flat. Well not necessarily white but a little light blue. And that should be it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Kind of zoom in a little bit for you so you can see the texture and the color a little bit better. Again thanks for watching this video. I hope this was um, informational and uh, please leave a comment at the bottom of this uh, page as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks.